Child Month continues with the days strung together by the theme, Listen Up, Children's Voices Matter. And while voice may technically be linked to sounds, some children's voices are heard by using their hands. That's the sort of inclusivity that Child Month enables. Everyone is allowed to share their voice however they can. And so in today's episode of Jamaica Magazine, we offer ways to engage deaf children. We also share an inspiring story of resilience and tips on resolving conflict amicably. Welcome, I'm Theodore Henry and the details of today's 30 minutes journey begins now. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, May 18. Government has announced plans to implement a Grow Smart, Eat Smart campaign aimed at ramping up food production and increasing the consumption of more wholesome meals. Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Pernell Charles Jr. made the disclosure Tuesday while making his contribution to the sectoral debate in Parliament. He says the campaign will get underway this financial year, supported by the Ministries of Health and Education. Madam Speaker, the national food security strategy then of Grow Smart and Eat Smart will be focused on the following areas of priority. Crop production, climate smart practices and technologies, access to finance, which is critical. We will focus on developing protection and advancing and expanding the insurance for our farmers with a focus on crop insurance and predator larceny. The country's essential oils industry will soon experience a significant boost with the introduction of an essential oils incubator project in the second quarter of this financial year. State Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce Dr. Norman Dunn made the announcement during yesterday's sectoral debate in Parliament. Dr. Dunn says the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, JBDC, is well advanced with implementing an essential oils incubator. The project will provide manufacturing capacity and position Jamaica to tap into the growing and lucrative oil industry. Market research has been completed to identify the essential oils that will be produced. Additionally, Madam Speaker, we have engaged the supporting partners and stakeholders to finalize the project component and to ensure the success of this incubator. The Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, will collaborate with other key agencies to provide lands for planting crops such as turmeric, ginger, lemongrass and moringa to supply raw material for the essential oils market. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has reiterated Jamaica's commitment to deepening its relations with the Republic of India. Concrete evidence of that is the Jamaica High Commission in New Delhi, which will be opened by the Prime Minister later this year. The two countries have also signed a Memorandum of Understanding to increase cooperation in the field of diplomatic training. We look forward to broadening our engagement at the multilateral level on issues of critical development importance, in particular climate change. Mr. Holness was addressing a special joint sitting of the Houses of Parliament on Tuesday. The sitting was among activities to mark the four-day state visit of Indian President Ramnath Kovind. India is ready to partner with Jamaica and share its technical skills, knowledge and expertise which could transform Jamaica's education and businesses. President Kovin's visit, which began on Sunday, ended earlier today. Ahead of his departure, the Indian President and his wife, First Lady Savita Kovind, participated in the unveiling of the India-Jamaica Friendship Garden at the Hope Botanical Gardens in Kingston. The garden now boasts a renovated gazebo, an upgraded entrance, and several sandalwood trees which are native to southern India. The President and First Lady Kovind were also guests of honor at a state dinner hosted by Governor General Sir Patrick Allen at King's House on Tuesday. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says plans continue to build a fourth international airport at Vernon Field in Clarendon. Jamaica currently has three international airports, Norman Manley in Kingston, Sangster in St. James and Ian Fleming in St. Mary. 
The Prime Minister says the international airport plan for Vernon Field will be built from scratch and include connected infrastructure to transform the area. When we think about things such as climate change, the possibilities of establishing uh, MRO, maintenance, repairs and operations of aircraft, and we think about the possibility of training pilots and maintenance crews for, 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 our, for aircraft, the possibility of having cargo here to our logistics. Inevitably, Jamaica will have to build uh, another airport. Uh, and we have been discussing this for some time with Vernon Field as a, a cargo facility. The Prime Minister gave the commitment as he toured the 70 million US dollar runway expansion project being carried out at the Sangster International Airport in St. James. When completed, it's expected that arrival and departure times at the airport will be lessened, while larger and faster aircraft will be accommodated. The Salt Spring community of St. James is reporting an 80% decline in the number of murders committed in the area. That's due in part to the introduction of a holistic intervention strategy by the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JASIF, in 2020. Managing Director of JASIF, Omar Sweeney, says these include community interventions and infrastructure development, as well as enterprise grants for business development. We've made 45 grants so far, and I will tell you that for every grant we give, there's probably five that didn't make the criteria. So. The ones that don't make the criteria continue to come back for more opportunities. Mr. Sweeney was speaking at the recent opening of the Salt Spring Community Park in St. James. He says the park is another phase of development for the community to provide a relaxing and recreational space for residents. And finally, the Yalas Health Center is among a list of facilities tapped to benefit from upgrades. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the expansion will take place over the next few years under the primary health care reform program. It's going to mean expansion of infrastructure like these. It's going to mean hiring more personnel. It's going to mean more activation into the communities where we go visit people's homes and sit down with them and talk to them and give them advice. And all of that in aid of just helping to build better communities. Minister Tufton was speaking recently as St. Thomas native Dr. D. Terence Foster adopted the Yalas Health Center. The facility will be adopted for a three-year period by Dr. Foster's foundation. We're fully committed and will continue to um, do our best to support this. And not just to be there for the three years, but to do as much as we can to make this, um, as I said, my dream. Our dream is to see this to become one day a state-of-the-art clinic. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. If you are uncertain about engaging deaf children as they articulate through sign language, then here are some tips on how you can lend a listening ear to their voices. some things we may say. No. Thank you. Goodbye. Excuse me. Yes. Please. Hello. I'm sorry. Wow. 
Wanna play? What's up? Stop. What's a Wi-Fi password? Where's the bathroom? What's your name? Drink. Water, what's the name of your school? Where's the town? Bus Park Shop How to get a deaf person's attention Don't shout at me don't throw anything at me. That's dangerous. You can walk beside me and touch me on my shoulder lightly. Or you can wave at me. If I'm in a room, you can flicker the lights. Maintain eye contact. Ensure you're looking directly at the person you're speaking with. Try not to let your eyes wander. Also, it's best to communicate in a room that has good lighting. If it's too dark, communication will be difficult. Please, make sure you don't have anything in your hands when you're talking to me. If you cannot sign, you can write, draw, show a picture, or text. Another way you can communicate with me is by using gestures. You can use your body and your hands to speak. For example, if you don't know the sign for bus, you could use this sign. If you don't know the sign for stop, you could use this gesture. A while back, we engaged Therese Braham, and while her name may not be so familiar to you, her story isn't uncommon. She was diagnosed with cerebral palsy as a child, which, as you can imagine, came with many challenges. Watch as Therese shares her journey while doling out advice to children forced to write this very same story. diagnosed with what is called thermal palsy. It is something that affects 
your immune your system on a whole so the ability to talk may be affected the ability to walk so you have mild severe and moderate so i'm diagnosed with what you call the mild in my earlier years i started out attending school at the Oak Valley School Experimental, at that point I was using a walker. So I used to push it and then step with it. However, I was walking on my toe point. So about at the age of 12, Sir John Golin, with the consent of my mother, did a surgery, hoping to have me standing up straight and being independent somewhat of the walker. However, the surgery did not go as we would want it to go. So my limbs became weaker and I ended up in a wheelchair. Well, growing up at first, like any other child, you'd wonder, why is it I'm not walking as a normal child would? As the years go by, you started to say, no, but I want to be able to do this, do that. However, the Mona Rehab Center provided a place for you where, after a while, you stopped looking at that because you saw other persons who had similar disability like yours or even more severe, and we were all taught to do stuff. I moved on to Mona High School. After leaving high school, I wanted to do something with myself because sitting home was not me. And I was the type of person where I want to go out. So guess what? I need to support myself because as much as I love my parents, I was of the fact, one day you're going to be retiring. Then my head goes back. What is going to happen to me when my mother retires? So of course, and I had the family support. They said, okay, go and get a skill. I enrolled in Abilities here um, September 99. I did a two years course in data operations, level one at the time. About April, before I graduated 2001, I said, but if you're serious about not going home, you need to start sending out applications. And of course, Abilities was one of the places I sent an application to. So July 7th of that year, I started working here. Well, my disability has taught me that when it says the sky is the limit, it is. There are times when you're going to fall, but what is to stop you from rising? And one of the ways that my disability has taught me, and even some um, disabled association that I am associated with, like the Combined Disabilities Association and even Abilities here, they have allowed me to go and exchange programs where you go and you interact with persons with other disabilities outside of Jamaica and even in Jamaica. And I have learned so much. I am able to speak about my disability. I have accepted that this is what I have. And it has also taught me that, guess what? I am sitting with cerebral palsy, but I'm not wasting my time. I'm molding other lives. I'm helping other persons to believe in themselves, to go out, because there are things I want to achieve and I feel I will achieve them. They will come with little obstacles because I'm not going to tell you that it's all good. And even my job here, it tells me if I quit, I'm saying to those that I've taught before, you can quit too. So there are times where we need to wipe the fears off and go again. Children with disabilities, whether you have CP or not, I strongly believe that you have a purpose. God has something for you to do. Because if somebody had said to me, you would be teaching, I'd be saying, really? If somebody had said to me, you'd be traveling to the various countries that I have been, I'd say, really, no. I am saying to you, go out there and believe in yourself. It's going to be hard. And there's going to be days when you don't even want to see a soul, you don't want to hear anything. But after a while, shake that off and look at the good about you. Look at yourself first. What is it that you love about yourself? And once you can find one thing that you love about yourself, maximize on it and go for it. And the rest is history. Put it behind you and don't let anything stop you. As my past managing director told me, life for us is a show because he also has a disability. And whenever you get up in the morning, you have to be ready for the stage because the stage is ready for you whether you're ready for it or not. Nothing can keep you down unless you want it to keep you down. Mommy? Yes, Zoe? Can we read this book? It will only take 10 minutes. Sure, sit down. Every spring, Madame Angel Wing arranges. Do you have 10 minutes? Read with your child today. Reading with your children for just 
10 minutes each day helps develop their language and listening skills, stimulates their imagination and expands their understanding of the world. So, start reading with your child today. For some children, the issue they face is risk of suspension or expulsion from school for whatever reason. If that's your current story, the Ministry of Justice wants you to know that it doesn't have to be your finishing point. Help is available through the School Suspension Intervention Program, and here's how. Our journey unfolds in different ways, different paths trodden by the unique worlds and ridges of our footprints. For some, that journey will never make contact with the wrong side, while for others, conflict will become a reality, even as a child. That's where the Dispute Resolution Foundation's School Suspension Intervention Program, SSIP, comes in, making help available for both children and parents. The Dispute Resolution Foundation provides a safe space for children where they can freely express themselves. So here they are not judged or cursed or bashed or any such thing. So that makes it easier for us to find the underlying issues that need addressing. So the school suspension intervention program emerged in 2006 as a result of the growing surge of crime and violence in the Spanish Town community. To support education officers or educators and persons who work with young people. And the service we provide is a rehabilitative program for students who are at a risk of suspension, those who have been suspended. That's our main focus here in the SSIP. First of all, we have to have a referral. The referral may come from educational institutions. It may also come from, let us say, the family court or CPFSA. Once we receive that referral, we engage the student in an intake session, followed by one-on-one -on -one session, after which they will join the psychoeducational group sessions. Following that particular session, we have another one-on-one -on -one session. At this point, there are times where we see the need to invite parents and other family members or those a part of the conflict that probably um, led to the student being referred to us in the first place. After that second one-on-one -on -one session, we oftentimes do a post-assessment that will help us to put together our release letter. Now, at the time that we'd be putting together this release letter, of course, there may be an opportunity to refer to another external agency, for example, Child Guidance Clinic. Apart from that, however, we will engage in follow-up sessions with the students. After 15 years of successful operation, the doors of opportunities that the program has opened to children who are at risk of suspension or those who have been suspended has certainly been something to talk about. Students are a bit reluctant at times on their first day, especially because they never really see the need for them to be here as the stigma attached to the program is that, you know, bad picnic, come this side and all of that. But after they understand the program, you know, it's explained to them and what they'll achieve here, they never want to leave at the end. And that certainly sounds accurate especially as it aligns with the testimonies of Nicholas Golding and Shamar Steele, now reformed thanks to the program. My principal introduced me to the program. Well, I was introduced to the program because of some late going to school and some trouble that I was given at school. So I was placed here to get around certain edges that need to be led to it. I got into a fight with one of my classmates, then get suspended. And the principal ended up seeing me in their program, learning to control my anger, and hopefully have a certain bad situation. Well, it helped in a majority of ways because it helps me to counteract with others on a better level. How to deal with disputes that involve being under control and how to react to certain people and how to walk away from certain things that is unnecessary. Some of the things that they use to help me is one-on-one -on -one sitting down with me, helping me to go through certain emotional problems and how to deal with certain problems. They teach me how to 
control my anger and teach me effective techniques how to manage my anger like walk away and take a deep breath or just think about something different and relax my muscle and how to resolve conflict between me and my peer or someone else. Since I've been through so much and I end up start doing movie based on my situation, my movie them, I write them on things that I learn. All of these positive changes is really because I was in the program. I would encourage other persons in a similar situation to join the program because they can learn how to control their anger, avoid certain bad situations, put themselves in any trouble and learn to resolve conflict between them and their parents or their peer or family members. I would encourage others to be a part of the program because this program helps you in a lot of ways, emotionally, physically, all type of ways that you think that many others, you cannot talk to them about certain things, but these people give an ear to your problem. We have some marvelous response. We have such life-changing opportunity for them. This is their second chance program. We've had moments where students, literally, we are still mommy, daddy, uncles, and aunties for many, even years after exiting the program. Imagine that. They'll still come back wanting to give their time to other students in terms of mentorship. So it's a lifelong relationship that we build with them, which I think speaks to the impact of the program on these beneficiaries. If you caught us at the very beginning, then you may have heard that the theme for Child Month is Listen Up, Children's Voices Matter. Listening isn't only an act of obedience, but also a show of respect and support. Listening can speak incredibly loud to those around you, especially children. So here are some tips on how to be a good or better listener, not only to children, but to those around you. First, do not interject when someone is speaking to you. Second, be patient and wait to respond. Third, ask questions when you need further clarification. Fourth, give the person your full attention. And fifth, put away and where possible, turn off any device that may pose a distraction. Listening isn't only a sure way of improving your relationships with those around you, it is key in helping to build the society that we all need and aspire for. That's a society that we hope to one day call the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. Every child is formed with their own intricate layers of uniqueness and deserves to be heard. This Child Month, we encourage you to do a good deed for our nation's future. Of course, today's show was riddled with supportive words and help for our children in certain situations. Feel free to share this show from our YouTube channel. There, you can also watch some of our other shows and features. Also, you can visit our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages for more information. From all of us here at the GIS, I'm Theodore Henry. See you soon. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.